Good morning, good morning. Da, 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 da. It's day three of Summerween. <laughs> Hello, friends. Welcome to the next Summerween vlog. Are we excited? I am. <laughs> so, if you haven't watched yet, I did a vlog of days one and two of Summerween where I read The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz, What Moves Are Dead by T. King Fisher, Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe, and I started Her Body and Other Parties, which I'm reading one short story from this every day for the readathon. If you haven't seen it, don't worry, you can still watch this, okay? <laughs> My worry with doing like series like this is the views like drop off the further in you get because people think, oh, I can't watch that without watching the first. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> I can't do it. You can. Can't. You can do it. You can. You can. So um, it's day three. I'm not going to put as much pressure on myself these next few days to like read as much as I did in that first vlog because I read a lot. I read like three and a half things in the first two days of the readathon. We have three things left on my like definite want to read TBR. I have great news, by the way, everyone. <laughs> the remaining prompts we've got left are read something with orange or black on the cover. I'm going with this one because out of everything on my definite TBR, other than what moves the dead, which I used for the novella prompt, I don't want to double up. This one was the darkest cover, like her hair is black, the shadows are back. So that's what I'm using for uh, something with black on the cover. And then I've got great news, guys. Karis, one of my patrons, pulled through. Turns out Our Wives Under the Sea takes place in the autumn. Here's the screenshot. <laughs> I'm not lying. Um, it takes place in the autumn or like part of it takes place in the autumn or fall if you're American. <laughs> so I'm gonna read this for that prompt. These are the three books we've got left. In terms of what I'm gonna read today, I think I'm gonna read You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight by Kaylin Bayron. This is a super new release. We're at a summer camp. I think it's slasher, everyone's dying, horror, like it's just fun. A summer camp for Summerween. Oh, the vibes, it's so good. Co-workers are disappearing, one ends up dead. I'm really excited for this. So I have read Cinderella's Dead by Kaylin Bayron. Um, I hated it. <laughs> I really didn't like Syndrome of Dead. And then I haven't read This Poison Heart or that whole series. This is like me giving Conan Bay on a second chance because I'm so intrigued by the premise of this. I think it could be just super fun YA. I think it's perfect for a readathon. So like this is our second chance. I love a good final girl trope. I've had loads of books that I've loved with a final girl trope. Final girl support group. There's more, but I can't think of them. Yeah, it's a trope I really enjoy. So I feel like if I'm gonna enjoy her stuff, it's this. And I'm also intrigued, you know, her branching into horror after writing more like fantastical, you know, fairy tale like stuff. So I'm really intrigued by this. So we're gonna start this. It is already 11 o'clock <laughs> and my plans today, I'm about to help Tom with some stuff and then we're going out for another walk. If you saw day two, we just went out for a walk. But usually at the weekend, we just go out for walks, okay? And then the only other thing is I do have a live show this evening with my patrons for our book club. So that's my only plans for the day. I don't know if I'll finish this today, but I'll definitely hopefully get a good way through this. I'll check in with you probably about halfway through. And yeah, I'm hoping I'm gonna love this. And thank you, Charlie, my patron again for gifting this to me the other day, because it's, I think it's perfect for Halloween. I feel very lucky to have this in my hands right now. I don't think I'll see you pull a walk, so let's go on the walk. <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> I'm gonna make some lunch before we go out for a walk. I've got some like fish I need to use up, so I think I'm gonna make like a salad. I got some boiled potatoes that I think I can crush and roast, so that's what we're gonna do. Wakeless, I am Underneath your wind I saw I'm gonna level with you. <laughs> it's almost eight o'clock and I'm only like 40 pages into this. It's today's not been a good reading day. 
I wish that I could just disappear. I just, yeah, I just went for a walk, hung out with Tom's family, hung out with my family. And because Tom is tending to be busier in the weeks with work at the moment, I'm just trying to keep weekends free. <laughs> Today, I just didn't feel like careening. <laughs> no, but I'm hopefully gonna read quite a bit this evening, but I'm just checking in because I'm just about to have uh, a book club live with my patrons, some of my patrons for our book club. We're gonna be chatting about A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross, completely separate to Summerween. I'd love to know your guys' opinion because everyone in the book club has kind of given it three stars. It was a 3.5 for me. So I feel like it's not gonna be the most exciting <laughs> book club live because everyone's just like, meh. <laughs> It's all right, I'm great. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna have to have that. And hopefully this evening, I would like to get at least halfway through this evening and check in with you. But yeah, reading, the days just escaped me. I think in the week now, the rest of the days in the readathon are in the week. And I think it will be much easier because I'll just feel like there's less, you know, the weekends I feel like I wanna be with my family, be with Tom, be with his family, like spend time with everyone because they're not, you know, everyone's off work whereas in a week everyone's gonna be working so I think it'll be easier <laughs> the next couple of days but anyways I'm gonna go hop on the live stream but hopefully I will see you this evening fingers crossed if I don't see you don't be mad at me if I do see you I want you to give me a massive round of applause okay <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> this is awkward. So it's day four of the readathon, and last night I didn't really read any more after the live show, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> and then today I had to do quite a bit of work this morning, so it's like four or five o'clock now, and I've only just got halfway through You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight by Ken and Bayron. Don't be mad at me. We're gonna read loads this evening and this afternoon, okay? Okay, this is a quick read. It won't take me long to finish this. Then the plan is we're gonna read two more short stories from Her Body and Other Parties, and then maybe we'll read Fangs, the graphic novel. That's the plan for the rest of the day, everyone. <laughs> so I'm already feeling like this vlog is gonna be like the ugly stepsister in the middle of the other two <laughs> summer week vlogs. And I've kind of just come to terms with that. So in this, we're at this like fake summer camp. So our protagonist is living there for the summer, but it's her job. Basically they like, uh, the where this is, sorry, I feel like you're really crooked. <laughs> where this is set was the set of a, notorious slasher movie um like years and years ago and they kind of reenact it for paying guests but like they make it seem like everything's gone wrong and someone's killing everyone when really it's all part of the show you know but then some of her campmates have started going missing now in the synopsis it says when one of her co-workers ends up dead charity's role as the final girl suddenly becomes all too real that hasn't even happened yet okay and i'm halfway through a 220 page book. Like, what is that about? Hell yeah, where is this bitch? Where is she? She's scared. Well, I'm getting a few out there and you hear me? Girl, I'm waiting on you. My big critique of this is that it just feels a bit slow. When you're promising me fun slasher, I want us to get to the fucking chase. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? The whole start of this has just been like them having nights where they're reenacting this and some of them going missing and her getting her friends to turn up and her girlfriend to come and turn up and help them. And them all just chatting and like, whatever. Like, it just hasn't been... I... <laughs> I haven't felt motivated to read this, which is part of the problem. It's been my Summerween saboteur. <laughs> it's not bad. I'm enjoying this a lot more than any other Kaylin Bayron that I've read. So I think I would, I mean, depends how this ends, but I would be up for reading from her again. There is something about her uh, dialogue that I just find a bit cringe, but I think I find a lot of YA dialogue quite cringe nowadays, but there's just something about it, the way, like, it's whole- I'm not calling Ken and Bayron old. Okay, let, let me get that out there. I'm not calling her old, but as an older person that isn't a teenager, right, trying to write how teenagers talk, I just find that so- I think it's so hard to pull off, you know? I just don't know how many people do it right when it's like contemporary- you know, this is horror, but like contemporary YA. So, I don't know. 
I'm a little bit bored. I'm not hating it, but like this promised me fun slasher, whoa, 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 you know, but I don't feel like the stakes are high yet. And if like in a 220 page book, you're telling me something in the synopsis that hasn't even happened at the halfway mark. Let's speed things up a little bit. Like, what what is going on? I'm so confused. Why? Like, why? Like, with a slasher, that should happen at the start. And then give me a whole book of, like, like Final Girl support group of, like, crazy stunts and crazy things happening and, like, running from the killer. And it's just not happening. So... Anyways, <laughs> we're gonna make the rest of today a success. Even though it's the afternoon, we're gonna make the rest of today a success for Summerween. So I'm gonna go head out to the garden and read the second half of this. And it is a quick read, so hopefully it won't take me long and we'll have a good pace to everything. And it will just be like, woo, yeah. I'm hoping at the moment it's like a three, 3.5. It's not bad, but we could be better. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I will say the second half of this gave me what I wanted. It gave me slasher, fast paced drama, incredible scenes, crazy, amazing. What is going on? The second half gave me this. However, if it's a 220 page book, you gotta give me that for the whole book. Cause it meant that this second half, although giving me the drama, it felt so rushed. It felt so rushed. It felt like we were like, <laughs> 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 trying to move as fast as we could. And so the ending, didn't feel like a satisfying resolution for me. There is something, there is like a last minute twist, you know, like th some thrillers and horrors do that, where there's like a last minute, like, whoa, oh, how the tables have turned, you know what I mean? One thing about them tables, they turn. There was that, and I enjoyed that. But on the whole, it's so hard because I enjoyed this much more than Cinderella said. I think I'm going to give this a 3.5, but it's going to round down to three on Goodreads because I have, you know, I have quite a few problems with it. Also, there is like a villain in this, of course, it's like the whoever is killing other people in this book. And <laughs> it reminded me, it reminded me of like, um, you know, in like a Disney Channel original movie when you were a kid and like there'd be a villain and it would just be like their whole reasoning for <laughs> why they were doing what they're doing. Which is kind of like, yes, it brought the drama, but it was kind of like, okay. Or like, you know, <laughs> you've never played Pokemon when there's always like the the bad team, whatever, like they're different in every game. And they always like have some weird motivation or like weird character backstory that you're kind of just like, right. <laughs> it just felt a bit cheesy and not, it felt more childish than teen than horror. Do you get what I mean? Yes, horrors can be cheesy, whatever. But just, it felt a bit like, uh, you know, and I've seen iterations of it done before and I think done better. I think this is a good readathon pick. It's so fast. You read it really fast. But I just I feel like it is quite short. And if it was longer, I feel like if you want that first hundred pages to just be building us up, we need like another hundred pages of action because it just wasn't enough, in my opinion. So anyways, I don't know what I'm gonna read next. Um I'll check in with you once I've read something else tonight because I feel like I need to go make that decision off camera. <laughs> okay, quick check in to say I just read the next short story in her body and other parties, which was uh what's the full title? 
Let's get into her full title. Especially heinous, 272 views of Law and Order SVU. So I think I said in the last vlog that I thought this was gonna be like a reflection. <laughs> on the Law and Order SVU show. Um, I forgot what I was reading, evidently, because it's not that. I mean, it is. Every, it's a lot of paragraphs where each one is basically just an episode title that is a real, sorry, I'm gonna move you a bit. Uh, that is a real episode title of the show. But like, I'm pretty sure that what is described as happening in this does not actually happen in the show. But I loved it. I loved it. It was the kind of weird surrealist horror that I just, uh, I eat it up. Try not to say mother challenge failed. That is definitely my favourite in the uh, collection so far. It was a five star for me. I should have read a second one today but I don't think I'm gonna have time. But yeah this one, oh it was so much fun. I have never watched Law and Order SVU <laughs> but I imagine that if you have watched it and like this is referencing all the characters from the show, I reckon it would be an even more fun experience. So so far we've had a five, a four, a three and a five in terms of the short stories in this collection so far. So I'll be intrigued to see what it averages out to. But yeah it was, I don't want to spoil anything for you, but it just kind of like goes crazy and I just loved it. I love this format of like giving me the episode synopses, but like, you know, what's real, what's not, I don't know. I loved it. I forgot to say when I read You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight, that ticked off the prompt, read something with orange or black on the cover, her hair was black, the shadows were black. So that's what I picked for that prompt. So we've done that prompt. So the only prompt we need to do still is read a book set in the fall. And I don't think this is, I mean, it may be, but the book I'm gonna read for that, Our Wives Under Sea, I, if I started it in this vlog, I wouldn't finish it. And I'm trying to keep the vlogs kind of like contained, the books, like not have books overlap between them. So hopefully I will read this tonight. It's not long. It's a graphic novel that I think is just about a romance between a vampire and a werewolf. So I think this will be a fun, summerween vibey read. So yeah, I'm gonna have a bath and then I will settle down and read this. Okay, so I read Fangs last night. I was too tired <laughs> to check in, but it took like 10 minutes to read. It was such a quick read. All I can tell you about this is that it basically is a romance between a werewolf and a vampire. Like that's all you need to know going into it. It's a super, super quick read. I just, I also I love the cover. Like I love the, it's like cloth. Can you see? I enjoyed this. I'm gonna give this a four star. My one, like reason it's not a five is that it's not actually like there's no narrative there's no story it's just each page is like a little vignette a little moment in their life and in their relationship together there's no continuing storyline and i just think that means i can't give it a five star because i didn't like you know it didn't take me on a journey we just <laughs> saw moments with them. There was one moment, if you saw me laughing, it only made me laugh like that once, but I don't know if you can see. He goes, can you speak to dogs? And it's a little cute dog and he says, you're a disgrace, it's a little doggy. <laughs> I found that funny, but there was no other moment that made me laugh like that. But yeah, I would say on the whole, this is a fun, like spooky-esque, well, it's not spooky in itself, but it's Werewolves and Vampire. It's got that kind of aesthetic to it. Yeah, a fun little graphic novel that I really enjoyed. Thank you to Sophie, by the way, for gifting this to me. This was gifted to me by Sophie. And yeah, I would recommend it. I think, again, this is another thing that's perfect for a readathon. It didn't take me long to read. Another tick towards my goal. Guys, I think I might, I, don't, I haven't said this anywhere because I didn't want to jinx it, but I think I might read 150 books this year. 
I think I'm on track for the first time ever to read 150 books in a year. Gagatrandran. <laughs> So that is the end of, technically it's day five now, so that's the end of the reading vlog for days three and four of the readathon. We read two books and a little bit more of Her Body and Other Parties. Both were fine, but we can't, the lofty heights of the five star from episode one, I don't know if we're gonna get another one, but I'm really excited. I already know what I'm gonna be reading in days five, six, and seven, but I won't tell you now because you need to tune into the next vlog, which will be out on Thursday. So it'll be out on the night for me of day seven. So I'll be finishing it like a little bit early, I guess, a readathon. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Let me know how Summer Reed is going for you if you're participating. If not, just let me know how your reading is going. If you got to the end, comment a ghost emoji. We did a pumpkin last time. I want you to comment a ghost this time. And I will see you soon in another video. Bye.